Chris, Daily Sign Pod, your boy for one-on-one -on -one reading. All my links are below. Check out the website. It's been updated, runningontero.com. That's hand spelled A-N-D, all one word, runningontero.com. Book a reading, reach out, how is your boy? Seven of Rods in the Upright is fighting for what you believe in. If you're not a Taurus, if you're a cross watcher, feel free to apply this to your second house in astrology. If you don't know what that is, look it up. You'll find the default chart and it'll explain to you what that sector pertains to in your life. Um, and you can apply this reading to that. It happens to be materialisms and value and worth day to day, but you'll see. Um, Taurus, feel free to apply Sun, Moon, Rising as well. Seven of Rods in the Upright. This is like, you know, going to bat for yourself, sticking to your guns. Actually, almost in a way, feeling surprised as to, um, well, depending on who you are, but at times this can be, at least the feeling that I'm getting is like a, holy shit, like I have these superpowers and I didn't even know. And a lot of that is just kind of being true to your heart, you know, like that Mulan song, like, you got me true to your heart. Don't get me singing here, um, but that's kind of what it is. Uh, despite someone not having seen the value um, in you and not investing in you, you remain disciplined and you remain internalizing um, in, a, in a healthy, positive, constructive way. You never really kind of let it destroy you completely or, or else you wouldn't be watching this reading. Um, despite hard times in the past, possibly, you didn't let the negative energies consume you. Okay, the Eight of Swords is here in the reverse as well. This is getting out of your head, getting present, being the kind of CEO of your life. For young men out there that are looking for a good book, I know it sounds kind of hokey, it's a couple years old. Um, it's Gene Simmons, I think it's called Me Inc. M-E comma I-N-C Inc. Um, it's like how to be the CEO of your life or something like that, some good stories. You know, it, it might not be saying what I'm saying directly, but it kind of, I think I think it did from what I remember. But it's kind of just like, you know, taking opportunity in your own hands and like, you know, going out and, and making it happen. Again, by Gene S Simmons, the guy from KISS. I know, you know, some people think he's a douche, but I think it's actually, from what I saw, I saw him do an interview on Adam Carolla. He seemed decent. He's like in his late 70s now. Um, Four Cups in the Upright um, is, not being maybe open emotionally to what's available to you. Maybe you have a particular construct as to what it might mean to, you know, practice piano by yourself for 15 minutes a day or working on that, like, you know, comedy pilot for like 15 minutes a day. Or, you know, some people are very kind of, they have adverse reactions to the thought of having to jump into something fully completely. Um, I think that people are more so geared to and have a predisposition to want to just be consumers and, um, you know, be entertained. And so the idea of kind of striking out on their own, whether it's like, you know, making a solo move or, you know, maybe it's safe to say that for the majority of people, that's a scary thought, but that could also pertain again to solo endeavors in which you have to kind of venture out into the wilderness within yourself, you know, the wilderness within. And, and I think that, you know, maybe there is this thing in us that, that is not necessarily comfortable with solitary endeavors. Maybe that is more of a modernity um, phenomena. The Eight of Cups in the reverse here is uh, not wanting to let go, not wanting to move on. Um, four of Cups in the Reverse is asking you to be open and vulnerable to these big picture ideas though, um, to looking at these kind of um, unknowns as something that can be fun and creative as opposed to either an arduous task or, you know, I think a lot of this is about how we look at certain things. You know, the reason I bring up the metaphor of like, you know, practicing piano for minutes a day is because the thought in and of itself and it doesn't have to be piano it could be just whatever anything that you have an affinity for or might be curious about advancing in um, the thought is usually boring or whatever but when you find yourself starting and you just get momentum and you just clock in like 15 minutes 
typically what happens is that your mind starts to switch into that mode of whatever it is that you're doing or pursuing or learning or working on or giving time to and it's like oh okay this is what we're doing and so by then you have so much momentum that you end up losing time and kind of putting in way more effort than you actually thought so it's a you know you want to actually take advantage of that phenomena the building the building of the momentum excuse me the death card in the reverse is rebirth energy more phoenix from the ashes we read this earlier for aries um so this is what i'm seeing here uh, again again uh, for may love and money taurus um a personal renaissance i think that you'll find that more and more certain things emotionally you're not going to be as um in the dark about meaning you're going to want to pursue them and you might even have more space and time to do so if you're recently out of a relationship you're going to have a lot of time and space on your hands possibly to rewater those seeds that maybe you left dormant um, before I know that I'm personally experiencing something like that, and yet there's so much kind of rewarding benefits that you could reap from getting back. One of which we talked about in the All Signs reading, which speaks to realizing, holy shit, I have a foundation and a skill here that I can actually build off of. And that's sometimes the benefit of getting distracted. Uh, I know that's not often an angle that we hear, but it, the, one of the perks is that when the distraction proves itself to just be nothing more than a distraction, you get to go back to something that's tried and true. And those are usually endeavors that you are tried and true and in earnesty and sincerity chipping away at with your life. You know, I think that sometimes, and again, with the grain of salt, that it doesn't matter what other people think, it's you're, it's you're the one that's investing the time and the effort. Sometimes the outside perspective is that, oh, this person is just doing this as a gag, or this person is, you know, not really in it for the right reasons, but you know at the end of the day whether or not you are um, kind of digging the well. And speaking of digging the well, the star card is in the reverse here. This is kind of that metaphor of, you know, digging deep, seeing how deep this goes, and the answer is it goes as far as you uh, are willing to venture. Um, but the, the more that you go and go and go, you're illuminating, okay? So it's definitely worth um, the uh, exposition and the excavations, uh, so to speak. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it there. Taurus, we're going to jump over to Gemini and see what else wants to come out again for love and money. May 2022 for something more specific. If you have something on your mind or your heart uh, and want some tarot guidance or clarity or a new perspective, feel free to reach out. We can do it over video, chat, messenger, email, text, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Check out the updated website, runningventaro.com. And here's some testimonials, um, some to read some testimonials, I should say, um, for some work I've done with people. And I'm gonna leave you there. Holler at your boy on to Gemini, May, Love, and Money. Again, these are just generals, so if you want, try to go rewatch um, this reading or, or watch all the other readings as well through the lens of either whatever house we're reading for. Again, Aries through Pisces is houses 1 through 12. You can look those up astrologically in the natal chart, uh, the default natal chart, um, or through the lens of love and money in particular, which I hope you're doing on your end. Um, and, and maybe, you know, not maybe, but... Hopefully, I'm assuming that you're making those connections to the context of your situation. Uh, I always advise that um, when you're watching these. Okay, that's enough for this video. How would you work?